Water, the most important element to life on Earth. Covering 70% of the world, water sustains the plants we eat and hydrates our bodies. But what if there was no water? Bibles, the Holy Word of God. God's written gift is His prime method of communicating the gift of grace to His children. Sadly, there remains two-thirds of the planet, over four billion people, who have never even held that message in their hands. Since 2007, Remnant Publications has been reaching the people of Africa with the Word of God. These are precious souls who have never had the opportunity to read the life-changing message of the Gospel for themselves. Hundreds of thousands of Bibles have already been donated and printed, loaded into containers, and shipped to the continent of Africa, making it into the hands of spiritually starving Christians eager to know more about the love of God. As the word has spread about the Bibles for Africa project, requests started coming in from all over the world, even unreached countries like Cuba. God seemed to be opening doors bigger than the staff at Remnant had envisioned. Following God's lead, Remnant has expanded the reach of the Bibles to cover the entire globe, making this a true worldwide project. Imagine. We can take your good unused Bibles and put them in the hands of an individual that really needs it. Or for just only $3, we can take a brand new Bible like this and get it sent to anyone that's hungering and thirsting for the Word of God. And not just in Africa, but anywhere in the world that it's needed. But as you've seen, the need is so overwhelming. We urgently need your help to reach the world with Bibles. Will you commit today to helping us in this exciting effort to share the gospel with the world? Will you help us introduce Jesus to these precious souls? To get involved and learn more about the Your Bible Saves Project, call us now at 1-800-423-1319 or visit us on our website at www.yourbiblesaves.com. It's rather ironic in the face of our economic situation with so many layoffs that I'm actually actively looking for workers in my vineyard. That's right. I have a world of searching souls with many walking hopelessly in spiritual circles, looking for direction and finding no one to help them. Where are my sowers and reapers? The harvest is ripe, but the workers are few. I'm telling you that those who sow for my sake, for my kingdom, will reap everlasting life. There is job security when you work for me. Why not get in the employment line? That was pretty neat, wasn't it? Wow, that's, that's hot not, back there. That's that's some fire. And um, you know, I hope I hope that you've got a little bit of a lesson. How you've all had your own fire experience, but make sure you get your Bibles. Get into Daniel three, chapter three of Daniel, and we're gonna we're just gonna finish this out with some great applications. You know, I just want to mention, Pastor, that you know we 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 ended where the three worthy said we're not. That's right. We're not going. And, not and here's, what's some, here's what's kind of neat. And um, it says that, that King Nebuchadnezzar said this. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, he said, listen, if you will, I'm going to give you a second chance. We talked about right. I'm going to give you a second chance, and I'm going to start the music. And when it stops, you need to bow down. Now, if you, know, if you don't bow down the second time, then you are going to immediately be cast into the fiery furnace. Now, the king was... The king being a king is a very sharp guy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes you want to you bring in the, you know, have you ever heard the saying, I'm going to bring the fear of God into somebody? Oh, yeah. So he wanted, he wanted to kind of bring it out where he's going to get more fear into these, these young oh, yeah. three worthies because he does not want to be defied. That's and right. so he's going to make them more afraid. But here's what I like. It says in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered after the king said all this and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might as well just take us right now because right. we aren't changing. We told That's you right. that once. God will take care of us. And then it says, um, <clears throat> if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Mm. Then it says, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you, which you have set up. I mean, that is a definite black and white, which... 
what, what, what I want the viewers to understand too is that isn't it amazing that, a, that it could have been a million Jews, a half a million, mm -hmm. two million, a lot of them. To them, it was a gray area. Yeah. To them, because they did not have that walk with God, a full surrender, to them sure. it was like, God, will, God won't really care. We're really bowing down to God. So it was great to them. But the, the three were these. And, and, and I wonder if the, the, the Jews thought, what's wrong with you? You'll have us all killed. Yeah. You don't have to do this. You know, Dwight, I think is what, what it takes my mind to is, you know, these same three with Daniel. Now, we don't know where Daniel was at this time. You know, it seems that he might have been out of the kingdom. He was right. an ambassador yeah. for the kingdom. Yeah. But these same three with Daniel in chapter 1, the Bible says that in Daniel 1 verse 8, that Daniel purposed in his heart and so did his friends. Yes. In other words, they made a decision ahead of time before the trial That's ever right. came that whatever yeah. comes, we're going to stand for God. In That's other it. words, they were committed to God. Yes. They didn't wait until the trial came and said, uh, what should we do? Yeah. That's why when the king came to, came to him, they said, we don't need any time. We don't need to consider again. Nope. We've already made our decision. And that statue obviously was not built in a day. That's right. That's they right. had plenty of time to think about it and pray about it. But, you know, I wonder if, if many of the other Jews said, well, we aren't going to bow either. We're not going to do it. We're not going to bow. We won't bow either. But when the trial comes, how many buckle under with fear? That's right. And these, but, but. You've got to be walking with You've Christ daily walking, if you're going to be ready for a trial. Like for that. like that, that's right. And then now they get now they heat the the fire furnace up seven times, and um, they throw them in. And, and isn't isn't it so hot that when the guards or whatever throw them in, that they that's right. They don't just pass out, do they? The Bible says in verse 22, chapter three. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, so they get thrown into the furnace, and of course, we're going to come to the end of the story, but they don't die. Right. And uh, God does preserve him. And somebody may say, well, maybe it's just because the fire wasn't hot enough. <laughs> so God leaves on record for us. It's just like Daniel in the lion's den, where they think the lions, maybe they weren't hungry enough. And then they throw down the men who, uh, who set up Daniel, and they get eaten right away. So we have the same here. God is saying, look, it wasn't that the fire wasn't hot enough. That's right. <laughs> it killed the men. They just throwing them in. It was so Yeah, they hot. weren't even in the fire. You know, they, and, and that, that's a tremendous point. And you know, something else, too, is that isn't it amazing that um, we're all going to have trials by fire? That's right. And, and, and I, I've shared with people in, in different messages that it's like the wax. If you take heat from the sun and put wax out on, you know, uh, where, where, like on the asphalt or uh, where it's get, gotten really hot, the wax melts. But you put clay out there, the same sun, the same heat, it makes that clay hard as a rock. That's right. The same sun can do the opposite thing. And so isn't it something that the fire, the fire purifies. We're talking about trials by fire That's purifies right. us. Right. If we allow it, if we surrender. With, with the three worthies, they had been purified. The fire couldn't hurt them. The other men that threw them in, they didn't even get as close to the fire as the three worthies. It killed them. That's same right. fire. That's right. So we see uh, the, the, the uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fire. And the king looks into the fire, you know, figuring, I mean, the, the men who threw him in faint dead away. You right. know, I mean, literally, they're, they're dead. dead. And uh, he, the, the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. The king's watching in there, figuring they're going to go down, but they're not going down. In fact, the Bible says he threw them bound. So they tied him up and put him in the fire. And, and he looks in, and they're not only dead, they're standing, but they're not standing. They're walking around freely. <laughs> in the fire. And it's not three anymore, is it? It's four. Four. So he who's the and, and Nebuchadnezzar looks in and he says, the fourth one looks like the Son, Son of, God. of God. Now some people say, well, how did he know what the Son of God looked like? You remember Nebuchadnezzar had a dream in Daniel chapter 2. Yes. And in that dream, he saw the Son of God coming in his kingdom at the That's end of right. that dream. Now, I don't know for sure, but that, that's what it makes me think of. Well, you know, and also that we're told in the, in the end of time when Jesus comes... That's right. There's going to be false Christ just before he comes. Mm -hmm. And it says, you'll hear him, you'll walk on the earth, but don't even go there. But when Jesus really comes in the clouds, there will be no question. You, mm. you may have never seen Jesus. I've never seen Jesus in person. Right. But there will be no mistake in who Jesus is. That's right. We'll know. That's right. And I, I think there was no mistake in and so Jesus is walking with them in the fire. And it's interesting. Now, I'm not gonna, we know they walked with Christ every day. But it's interesting that nobody saw him with them until they were in the fire. And I think there's a lesson in that, that oftentimes it's, it's in our trials that Jesus is closest to us. That's right. See, we fear the trial, but I think of the text in James 1 where it says, James says, my brothers, count it all joy when you fall 